Hello, everyone. Let's see. Then vlogs. Okay. So we're live. Anyone here? <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm live. So let's see. Um, sa mga nakapanood ng video na to right now, please comment kung nakikita nyo na ako. Okay. I guess I'm live. Thank you. Sa ating, gosh, this is so weird. Ako lang mag, parang pinin ko ako lang mag-isa yung nagsasalita. Dito wala akong kausap when everyone's online. Okay, I have two viewers. <laughs> oh, salamat sa dalawang hearts. Uh, admin... Add mo Jen Perez Alejandro. Um, pwede bang pakicomment if we can start now? Okay, go. All right. Go lang. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Pagpasensya nyo na yung background sa likod. I'm in my son's room. So, we'll... Um, after nitong web, uh, Facebook Live, uh, I will be sending PDF files ng handout. This is what I prepared about homeschooling. Uh, ang title, uh, my husband and I prepared this, uh, itong handout na to, to put our ideas together. Ito sa ba, Homeschooling 101. Sensya na kayo, nakakonscious talaga ako sa camera. But um, anyway... For starters, uh, gumawa ako ng disclaimer na, of course, uh, lahat ng presentation na, na prepare namin ay um, based sa experience namin as a homeschooling family. And this is no way in line or teachings ng The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is our church. Although, medyo, yung may mga, syempre may mga um, bagay na kasama na isinama namin na turo ng church. Okay, so uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Karen Ivanis Cornelia de la Cruz. Uh, ako po ay taga Bukawi Ward, Valenzuela State. So, ang family namin, we're a family of four. 
uh, I, I serve my mission sa California, in California Sacramento Mission. Yung asawa ko sa Taiwan, Taichung, siya nag-mission. We have two kids. Si Kendrick, he's seven years old. In second, uh, grade three na siya pala, grade three. Si Charlotte is in kinder. Oh, wait, sorry. Grade one na pala siya, grade one. Uh, so as far as education namin, kasi so homeschool, it's important yung, yung educational background ng tutor or ng teach or ng parents. So ako, uh, I graduated in information systems, minor in English as an international language sa Brigham Young University, Hawaii. Keep those loves and likes coming. Thank you for your support. Uh, my husband, um, and now pala, I'm in graduate school for my, I'm, I know, I'm working towards my postgraduate diploma in language and literacy education at the University of the Philippines Open University. Asawa ko naman, graduate ng journalism sa University of the Philippines, Diliman. How long have we been homeschooling? This is our second year. Uh, yes, and our homeschool provider is School of Tomorrow. We decided to, I know, to have a homeschool provider. And why homeschool? Home, why homeschool? Because, to be honest, we've lost faith in, in the traditional school. Um, I guess along the way, medyo we discuss natin yan. But it's more of, I know, but more than anything, if there's one thing I learned from homeschooling and why we chose homeschool, uh, mas tiwala ako sa quality of education that my kids can take sa amin as parents as opposed sa ibang tao pa. Let's put it that way. So, um, sensya kayo, may kodigo ako. So, um, out, so uh, here's, ano, ito yung magiging flow ng discussion natin. First, yung, ano, this, because this is the basics of homeschooling, we will start uh, yung sa definition of terms, like, you know, familiar, words that you need to get yourself familiar with in homeschooling. Uh, tapos, ano, lahat ng, yung mga discussions natin, the first few parts of the discussion, yun kasi yung, nung nagpa, the post si Doreen about yung so questions, questions you'd like to know about homeschooling, ito yung mga questions na madalas na lumabas, so I put them all together into one. Tapos yung mga specific questions at the end of the, our discussion, saka ko isa, isa hin, sagutin. So we have six viewers. Thank you. Thank you so hard. Thank you so much. Thumbs up. Okay, so una definition of terms. Frequently, yung mga frequent terms now we will hear about homeschooling. Number two, is it legal to homeschool in the Philippines? Number three, is homeschooling recognized by the Department of Education or DepEd? Tapos next, kailan ako pwedeng mag-start ng homeschooling? Ano ba ang pros and cons? Ano bang advantages and disadvantages of homeschooling? Ano ba ang... Ito, yung mga person, yung mga hugot lines namin, mag-asawa, as to why we decided to withdraw from traditional schooling. Okay, so by the way, uh, yung pani namin from kinder up until grade one, ano siya? Home, uh, he was in a traditional school. Yung bunso namin at the time, di pa siya nag-aaral. So ngayon, uh, this is our second year. So yung bunso namin never siyang naka-experience sa traditional schooling. Then, uh, what are the yung costs. Ano ba mag, ano, magkano ba mag-homeschool? Yung mga requirements. Tapos kung ano, yung frequently, ano, yung madalas na issue sa homeschooling, yung socialization. Magiging socially awkward ba yung anak ko? Paano siya makikipag-socialize? Tapos yung other questions and concerns we will cover later at the, part, the latter part of, of this ano, webinar, Facebook Live, about yung 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 mga specific questions they had. Tapos, syempre, uh, we'd like to share uh, ano, yung mga activities we've had ano, during our last school year. So, okay. So, let's start. Question number one. Is it legal to homeschool in the Philippines? The answer is yes. According to Article 14, Section 2, Paragraph 1, estab ano, we, are to, we can establish and maintain a system of free public education in the elementary and high school levels without limiting the natural rights of the parents to rear their children. Take note, ah, ulitin ko. Without limiting the natural rights of parents to rear their children. So, ibig sabihin, you can go, you know, traditional, public school, private school, progressive, or homeschool. At, sinabi sa family ko, nilagay ko to dito kasi it's, I think it's very important na 
it's this is in line with the teachings of the church. Sabi sa family code, the family code recognizes that parents have the primary responsibility of educating their children. Yeah. So, question number two. Kasi, ano, please comment if I'm going too fast. Pag nininervis ako masyado, kung mabilis, magsalita. Okay. So, is homeschooling recognized by the Department of Education or DepEd? Ta-da! Ang sagot ay, yes. It's another yes. According to Dex Memorandum, number, two, number 216, series of 1997. Home education is designed to provide an alternative delivery system of education from which children acquire the necessary skills to develop their full potential to become self-propelling, fulfilled, and contributing members of the community. So yan po ang sabi ng Dex Memorandum, memorandum number 216, series of 1997. Okay. So, uh, so here's ano na. Yung mga, don't worry. Uh... Bibigay ako na ano after the presentation. I will share this online with you. You can share it with anyone. All right. So dun na tayo sa definite yung mga definition of basic mga uh, homeschooling terms. Ang first is box curriculum. Box like box curriculum. Ito yung mga curriculum na when you go to a homeschool provider. Ito yung materials namin. Answer them then ibalik niya sa amin. That's why it's called the box curriculum. Curriculum is yung, syempre, yung mga ginagamit na textbooks, manuals, grading guidelines, lesson plans, yun yung, ano, worksheets, yan, yan mga yan, yan yung tinatawag sa curriculum. And of course, the word homeschool is also called homeschooling, home-based learning, home education, home learning, or home study. It's an alternative, it's an alternative teaching uh, education method na Usually, it's the parents who are in charge. Or kung hindi man parents, usually, pag kunwari, lalo na sa mga higher levels, like, you know, high school, uh, the parents can hire a tutor specifically, say, for math. Yan. Next, I meron tayong association ng homeschooling. It's called the Homeschool Association of the Philippine Islands are happy. Ang president ng Happy ngayon is Dr. Donna, Donna Pangilinan Simpao. Siya rin yung founder ng Homeschoolers of the Philippines. So, Happy is a non-stock, non-profit organization that aims to equip homeschooling groups and organizations in growing the national homeschooling movement. And we launched on 2010. It, ano, it, Happy has strived to help emerge and establish homeschoolers all over the Philippines. Next, I am homeschool provider. A provider I is an organization that keeps and provides records of transcripts to its students. So, nasa bahay ka, wala ang magulang usually in teacher, then your homeschool provider will and will take care of, of the F137 submission of grades sa DepEd, LRN, yan mga yan. Y yun ang um, ginagawa ng homeschool provider. Tapos meron din tin tayong tinatawag na if you're not with a homeschool provider, then chances are you are an independent homeschooler. Independent homeschoolers, hindi sila enrolled or affiliated with any homeschool providers. Although ginagamit nila yung guide ng DepEd sa curriculum, sila yung in charge sa records nila. As in, sila lahat. Sila lahat kung anong gusto nila ituro, style nila. Ngayon sa bahala. We'll get to independent homeschooling in a bit. Next is interest-led learning. This is a teaching method where students study topics that interest them. Uh, they, wala silang sinusundan na curriculum. In our case, a School of Tomorrow, we have a box curriculum kasi may, may, we have a set of materials that they need to answer. Although, meron ibang subjects like MAPE na walang, wala silang modules. Kami ang bahala na mag-administer however we want to administer it. So kanina, one example of interest-led, uh, kaninang umaga, it, uh, no, it's our art class. We usually, uh, mahilig kasi sila sa origami, so yun yung ginagawa namin. But today was an exception kasi nagtanong yung anak ko na yung sa Chinese na shadow puppetry, paano na ginagawa yun. So, I, so ang ginawa namin, nanood kami ng video sa so YouTube, we found a video on YouTube, like a 10-minute video, na that discusses about 
yung shadow Chinese shadow puppetry. So that so yun yung that's an example of interest led learning. Learning styles apat yan. Yung ano yun yun daw yung style na pag sa ganong approach mo ginawa yung pagturo sa bata. Then yun yung pinaka so pinaka nagagrasp na talaga. So first is yung auditory, yung some ano learning through listening and speaking, music. Next yung visual, learning through seeing, kinesthetic or tactile yung ano learning through touch and movement. Yeah. So iba't iba yung style. It can be one or the it can be just one. It can be a combination of everything. So yun yung tatang learning style. Okay. So sa mga sorry. Sa mga indie homeschoolers or yung sa mga gusto mag-independent homeschoolers in the future, you should be familiar of PEP test. PEP test means Philippine Educational Placement Test. Ito ay under the Accreditation and Equivalency Program. Um, say, I'm PEP. Oh, thank you. Thank you sa mga keep us coming. Uh, sa mga likes, support. So, yung PEP test, it's a, uh, yung nga, kung, so kung say, you're ind independently homeschooling, right? Para ma-credit yung tinuro mo sa anak mo and to see, para mag-gauge kung nasa ang ano na siya, sa ang grade, basically ganun yan eh. It's, uh, this is basic, so I'm not gonna get into itty bitty details of independent homeschooling. But basically, pag, if you feel like, okay, this is time for us to take a PEP test, should you decide maybe to go to a homeschool provider or go back to a traditional school, it's a way na um, pupunta ka sa DepEd, pukuha siya yung bata ng exam, yung anak mo, kung saan grade level, then pag naipasa niya yun, say grade 3, mo siya ipinasok, like for grade 3. Then, you can move on to the next level, so either traditional or uh, homeschool provider for grade 4. Parang yun yung equivalent. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Post lang, comment lang kayo ng questions if you have questions. Next is portfolio. So, ang ibang home, marami sa mga homeschool providers humihingi ng portfolio as, you know, as a sense of accountability, like what you did for the first quarter of the year and so. One of the examples is Homeschool Global. Um, although, those were, that was the last time I checked with them. So, if you think na medyo, ano na ako, outdated na ako sa Homeschool Global, please comment and share. What do you think? So next is not uh, supplemental resources. Ito yung mga mat materials, classes, and field trips, or projects that are used to supplement the homeschool the homeschooling journey. Like for example, in that, like we use we use YouTube. We have a box curriculum, as I mentioned earlier. Say we I know my lesson shot about one time my son son had a lesson about beavers, how they make I know parang how they make dams. So be as a no, so beavers. So instead of just reading yung modules niya, we went online. Tapos pinakita ko sa kanya how beavers actually make a dam. Yeah. So that's one example of supplement resource. So and last, I ang traditional homeschooling. And traditional homeschooling, I yung mga estudianting naga attend ng public private public or private schools. Yeah. Traditional, regular schooling, para para sila. So, ang, ang next na question ay, kailan daw pwedeng mag-start mag-homeschool? How early can I start homeschooling? Actually, sa totoo lang, um, you can start homeschooling as early as you can. You know, kahit infant pa. So, uh, gumawa ko ng chart na, you know, when your baby is, pag may infant ka pa, you can, you know, as early as a few months, newborn, singing lullabies to him, that's part of homeschooling. Ano na yun eh? Technically, it's, you're, you're already homeschooling kasi tinuturoan mo na siya, di ba? It's, ano eh, it, it, I think it's innate for us mothers na automatic na, di ba, yung kinakausap natin yung, yung mga anak natin, little ones natin, kahit hindi pa sila talagang nag-respond sa atin. So, in a way, that's how we're teaching yung language acquisition nila. Uh, if, if I may add motheries or yung influence ng mothers sa, ano, sa bata, plays a big role, in, big influence in language acquisition. Okay? So, ako nilagay ko dito, based on our experience, uh, yung nursery rhymes, 
pag infant, tapos syempre mga box, lalo na yung mga minsan, di ba, yung mga box sa pag binuksan mo, pwede mong hawakan may mga rough or smooth edges. Tapos yung ano, uh, may nabasa rin ako somewhere na something that we've that made it na naging effective sa family namin, sa mga anak namin. Yung ini-insert mo yung pangalan niya sa nursery rhyme para maging uh, maging repetitive, pa, parang mas naging repetitive, mas nalalaman niya na, ay, ganun pala yung pangalan ko. So, for toddlers naman, syempre, nandun na yung nursery rhymes, alphabets, saka yung mga yung numbers. Now, uh, na, nakausap namin yung uh, academic advisor namin before nung, nung lately lang, so, in preparation for preschool, it's important na matutunan ng bata ay colors, uh, yung blending ng mga alphabet. So, in, so kasama na dyan yung ano, phonology or yung phonetics. In short, yung mga and, uh, sounds ng letters in English and Filipino. Yung mga synonyms and antonyms at saka addition and subtraction. Yan, yan ang mga sabi na, no? Kaya ko yung kaya ko yeah. So, now I'd like to move on about the pros and cons of homeschooling. Ano ba yung mga advantages and disadvantages ng homeschooling? So, magsimula tayo sa pros. Sa uh, um, ang first namin mag-asawa is the curriculum can be individualized. Individualized, ibig sabihin, ano ba yung program na mag-work sa, kay, sa kay panganay, kay pangalawa, kay middle child, or kay bunso. Sa so, traditional school kasi, di ba, ang teacher, iisang instructions for one day. Say, ang usually an average, I must say, for a private school, one teacher to 25 students. Imagine those 25 students have different learning styles, different multiple intelligences, pero iisa lang ang style na pagturo ng teacher. And everyone's expected to learn everything at the end of the day. Otherwise, kung may quiz, bukas bagsa ka. Kung may test, bukas bagsa ka pa rin. So, anong gagawin? Mag-tutor ka pa. Kuha ka pa ng your, ano, your chances are, after school, mag-hire ka pa ng tutors. Yan. So, next, mas maraming time to spend with family. Kasi, after, once, once school is done, it's done. Wala ka nang gagawin pang iba na homework. Kasi nasa bahay ka naman nag-aaral. Yan. Tapos, eto, problema na lahat ng mommies, at least for me, because I'm not the morning, I'm not a morning person. Sa mga night owls na tulad ko, mahirap gumising sa umaga. Mahirap magpagising ng bata sa umaga. Tapos groging 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 pa pagkagising, di ba? So, yun yung isa sa pros of homeschooling. Kasi enough yung sleep ng bata. Although, it's always important to remember na hindi naman ibig sabihin naka-homeschooling kay anytime ka lang mag-start, pwede na. That you also have to set a routine. Ayan, tapos, ito, personal experience ko at hugot ko sa buhay ko ay um, hindi kailangan gumising ng nanay ng maaga para mag-prepare mag ng breakfast, ng baon, magpainit ng tubig sa umaga. Ayan. Tapos, dun sa mga nakatira sa metro, sa mga urban areas, ang traffic. So, sa homeschool, dahil nasa bahay ka lang, you don't need to rush and worry about the traffic. Kasi, syempre, it's also something you have to consider that when, when, you're, when you'll be attending a traditional school, you have to allow time for travel. Tapos, with the, you know, with, with yung lalo na na meron na tayong come follow me, mas matututukan ng parents ang bata sa gospel. Tapos, Mas maraming ano eh, kasi nga, like what I mentioned earlier, sa traditional school, whether you like it or not, quiz bukas, eh, what if yung bata yun, hindi naman siya ganun kagalingan sa isang, su kagalingan sa isang subject, pagkatapos, mamadaliin mo siya, na by tomorrow, whether you like it or not, kailangan kabisado mo na yung lesson, kasi may quiz or may test bukas. So, ano nangyayari sa bata? But then again, ha, this is my personal opinion based on empirical experience, no, empirical evidence, which is my personal experience as a homeschooling parent na incoming second year. So, ang nangyayari sa bata, mas nagiging kabisote siya. Hindi niya na ma-master yung lesson kasi may, tapos na dun pa yung pressure na tinuro na sa school, pag-uwi ng bahay, tuturo ulit ng magulang, tapos pupok, ano, parang 
nandun yung pressure na kailangan mo tutunan mo to may tomorrow kasi may quiz ka. So, sa homeschooling, yun yung kagandahan na he has all the time, not he has time na at his own pace na mas ma, matutunan niya yung in lesson. So, it's mastery over versus memorization. So, dahil nga sa flexibility ng homeschooling, mas marami kami sa family namin, we splurge on field trips, which we will show you later. Ayan. Tapos, hindi na kailangan ng tutor after class. Tapos, walang homework. Tapos, mas nakikita ko na ano, dahil hindi sila, yung mga anak ko, dahil hindi sila rushed into doing things, mas nakikita, mas nag-enjoy sila sa education kesa sa napapressure sila na kailangan ba tomorrow gawin mo to. Ayan. Tapos, Sabi nga ni Tina Rodriguez sa kanyang blog sa National Bookstore, the cl uh, ang classroom ng homeschooling ay hindi lang ang four corners of the wall or the house or ano pa man yung building na yan. It's the world. Ngayon, I will proceed to the what are the cons or disadvantages of homeschooling. Ano-ano nga ba? Sa mga mommies, katulad ko, na stay-at-home mom, wala tayong me-time. Wala tayong hashtag me-time. Kasi, you know, we're basically with them for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Kasi pagka sa traditional school, hatid mo lang yung bata sa school, then you can get to do the chores. Pahinga ka konti, tapos a few hours later, mga parang may day gear ka na a few, days, a few hours later, pwede mo nasundain yung bata, then you can have that a few hours of window na you have time for yourself. Tapos ito. Laging hashtag may pasok, lalo na pag mga panahon ng bagyo, na due to inclement weather condition, hashtag walang pasok ang declar declaration ni Mayor. May pasok pa rin. Well, in our case, as a family, sinabi naman sa amin ng homeschool provider namin na we, make, we have to make our students or our children feel na parang nasa school pa rin sila. Kung walang pasok, yung ibang, yung ibang peers nila who are in traditional school, then... Go for it. Mag ano ka rin, mag wag ka rin magpapasok. But but in our case as a family, kasi nga yun yung ano eh, you can adjust. Sa amin, pag may inclement weather condition, may pasok pa rin kami. Pero pag holidays, like national or Bulacan holidays, tagalin ko sa Bulacan. Then wala kaming pasok. That's what we do. Pagkatapos ano talaga? Next na ano ng ng homeschooling. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Talagang lahat ng patients mo, alam ko as, a, as mothers, patient na tayo, pero mas kailangan mo pa maging patient ng buong ang kapag ka, nag, ano ka, nag uh, homeschool ka. Yan. At tapos, isa kong nakikita ng problema sa homeschooling, yung familiarity. Masyad, yung anak kasi natin, di ba, pagka sa ibang tao, medyo may tendency silang mahiya. Pero dahil nanay nila tayo, dahil ako ang tayo ang nanay, kung ano yung tunay nilang ugali, ilalabas nila. <laughs> so, I think that's one drawback of homeschooling. But it's, ano, dapat talagang i-establish mo sa anak mo na when we are in school, I'm the teacher, you're the student. I'm not your mother. <laughs> Yan. So, meron akong support. May, may fan support ako dito sa labas. Hindi nyo narinig, pero tama raw, sabi ni Royce. Next! So, oh, pumasok ka dito. Eh, hindi ka kasama sa group eh. Sorry ah, side comment guys. <laughs> Alright. So, may mga activities. <laughs> Ayan, may naghahana. Um, I appreciate all your likes, loves. Gosh, talagang nakakonsyos ako in front of the camera. Um, so, the child may miss out on other things. Like the, the traditional school, like other activities that the traditional school can provide. Like, you know, from, yung mga JS prom, Linggo ng Wika, yung mga field demo, Foundation Day, United Nations. But, wait, there's more. Dahil tayo ay members ng The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Pumasok ko na nga dito kasi. Pumasok ko kasi ang dali. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but then again, dahil tayo ay member ng totoong simbahan, it can be compensated by other activities for free, di ba, by the church, in which I will also discuss later. At dahil ito ay tungkol sa homeschooling, um, 
gusto kong i-share naman sa inyo, ano ba yung mga drawbacks ng traditional school? Pansin niyo sa honor ro, o sino yung magaling kumabisa, magkabisado? Most of the time, ah, I'm not saying uh, that's usually the case. Because I'm, I'm, I'm an honor student myself and my husband too was pala. Ang um, isa ay, usually, it's the same 10 people in the honor roll. So, ang, ang, anong iisipin nilang ng bata ay, hindi ako matalino kasi wala ako sa honor roll. Chances are, hindi magpurpurso yung bata na mag-aral kasi it's the same people over and over again. Na feeling na hanggang dito na lang siya when you know as a mother, as parents, your child can aim higher and he can do better than that. Kaya lang, ang na-award ang lagi, yung pare-parehas, nag-iikot-ikot lang yung sa top 10. Tapos, yung time. Minsan, ano eh, we have to follow, there are schedules we have to follow in sa traditional school. Then, the time may not be conducive for learning sa isang bata. Early in, you know, some people, mas tulad ko, are night owls. Some people are morning, early worms, early birds. <laughs> early birds. So, I'm, that that usually that also affects the studying. Next, I, yung multiple, yung what I mentioned earlier, yung learning style, it's multiple intelligence, hindi nakikater ng teacher. Because number one, walang pakailang yung teacher, basta as long as she's doing her job as a teacher, tapos na siya. Meron, or... Talagang at that pace, ito yung lesson natin ngayon araw na to, whether you like it or not, whether you're catching up or not, kung advance ka or late ka, sorry. This is our lesson for today. Tapos, usually, ano, ang mas marami yung oras na nasispend ng bata sa school kesa sa bahay. Say, in the morning routine, this is this was a usual routine nung nasa traditional school pa anak namin. 5 o'clock, gigising ako to prepare breakfast, baon, ganyan mga 5:30, 6:45 gigising siya to eat breakfast. Tapos mga 6:15 aalis na kami. Pupunta kami nang hahatid namin siya sa school. 7 o'clock yung class niya. 12 o'clock natatapos. Para tap ano, kasama ko kasama the time di ko hindi pa nag-aaral yung bunso namin. So, uh, kasama ko siya lagi. Wala kaming kasambahay. So, wherever I go, she goes. Susunduin namin po yan niya, 12.30, so mga 1 o'clock, makakapag-lunch kami. Matutulog siya for a few hours, 2-3 hours max. Pagkagising niya, for 4 o'clock siguro to 7 o'clock before dinner, mag-aaral pa siya ulit for homework and or for projects or mag-review for exam for the following day. Tapos, matutulog. So ngayon naka-homeschool kami, once they're done, they're done. So they can fin- kung maaga silang nakatapos, good! Pag hindi, not too bad. <laughs> Yan. Tapos, so, mas marami na silang time for other interests. Na, other people, yung mga mapin nila, like in our case, School of Tomorrow, wala kaming modules, wala kaming paces for, for mape. So, yung iba, you know, they enroll their kids in piano lessons or soccer, mga ganyan. So, mas maraming time for other interests ng bata. Hindi lang puro academics. Uh, tapos, should any, for whatever reason na nagkasakit yung anak nyo, then you can stop. Na, naalala ko yung anak ko last year, he had sa church. So please, kung may sakit yung mga anak nyo, don't, na contagious, please do us all a favor and don't bring the, take them to church. Nagkaanak, na, nakuha ng anak ko yung hand, foot, and mouth disease sa church. So he was, his his doctor told him that he can't come to school for three weeks. You know, so yung teacher about the situation. Uh, unfortunately, sinihingi ko sa kanya yung yung lesson for the entire three weeks that he'll be missing class. Hindi niya sa akin binigay. But tapos boom, pagpalik niya quarterly exams na. Sa kanya sa akin binigay yung pointers. So we had to ano. So kailan namin madaliin yung the entire three weeks. Pagdating niya first day of class, exam na agad. Yeah. So, you have that flexibility when, you know, sa homeschooling. Tapos, uh, ako ha, comparing myself, although I was never homeschooled, yung nabobored ako, nabored ako na for the same routine for the whole one year, on schedule, 
math, science, English, Filipino, ganon. Uh, kasi kami, like what I said, our, the program, homeschooling, with or without a homeschool provider, can be individualized. So in our case, ang ginagawa namin, para medyo maiba lang every day, although it's the same subjects every day, iniiba-iba namin kung ano yung mauna, which one, first, second, third, and so on. Para hindi naman sila maboard na pare-parehas na lang every day. Although, at least we get things done. Tapos, sa traditional school, everyone is expected to behave the same way. Uh, like my son, he's a kinesthetic learner. So, kung nasa traditional school ka, sasabi, sinabihan siya, ang kulit-kulit niya kasi tayo siya ng tayo. But when you're in homeschool, when you're homeschool, or, na, or maybe in a school na that understands your, your, you know, your learning style, hindi problema yung yung kinesthetic learner siya. And if this is a given fact. In grad school, we I just learned recently na ang spatial intelligence, one of the multiple intelligences, hindi, it's not proven na pag nakaupo ka ng maayos, you know, you're sitting still and behaving well, guarantees learning. Okay? It can be anything. So, ito. And next ay ang cost. Ano ba ang gano'n ba kamahal, mura? Ba, mahal ba ang homeschooling? When I started attending graduate school, maraming kaklase ako, niloloko ako. You must be rich kasi you can afford to homeschool your children. The answer is no, so not. So, ang answer ko dyan is the cost and the requirements. It can be cheap or expensive. Kasi, it can be cheap kasi, you know, if you're, independent homes, if you're independently homeschooling, yung sa books lang yung ginastusan mo, at wala ka naman homeschool provider, okay lang. Or, go big or go home. Ano ka ba, gagastos ka ba ng bongga sa mga travels? Sa mga field trips? Yeah, so my answer is, it can be cheap or expensive depending on where you want to put your budget in homeschooling. As for our family, we like to travel. But we'll share those later kung ano yung mga uh, cost-effective ways that we, you know, we were able to do field, some field trips. So I have here with me some homeschool providers na nung na-inquire kami last year. Ng, so these were personal emails I got from them about increased re requirements at saka tuition. So here we go. First of all, we'd like to start with Catholic Filipino Academy or CFA. Owned by Bo, by Bo Sanchez. So ang requirements I so I thought take note of these, maybe get a few copies, you know, like PSA birth certificate. Original photocopy for CFA, uh, photocopy of child's baptismal certificate, if applicable, siyempre for us, Latter-day Saints, uh, previous original school records, original report card signed by the principal, certificate of good moral character from previous school, if applicable, photocopy of parents' marriage contract, if applicable, photocopy of parents' college diploma. See, you say sa requirements. May mga homeschool providers who, you know, ask for college diploma of the parents or transcript of records, which we will get to. Pieces of but one by one recent colored picture, white colored shirt, red background. Tapos susulat daw yung pangalan ng student sa likod. Kasi siya lang natatawa ko because I can overhear my husband at the kitchen. Next, umasok ka na kasi dito. Next is, okay, he's cooking and I can smell it. Next is family picture. Tapos, addition, meron silang SPED program or yung meron silang tinatawag na specialized program applicants. So, yung sa mga may special needs ng mga anak, kailangan ng neurodevelopment diagnostic diagnosis report, latest SPED assessment, latest therapy intervention report, letter recommendation for mainstreaming at medical certificate for those with medical condition. So, now, ang pinakamadugong part ay magkano ang tuition. Ang tuition per child Ay, wait, ang application fee pala per child is 500 pesos. Non-refundable reservation fee ay 2,000 pesos. At ang tuition ay 30,000 pesos. Hmm? Okay, next ay ang Homeschool Global. Ang requirements sa Homeschool Global ay yung authorized copy, birth certificate, uh, yung ano, F-137, Sorry, I'm ah, mal. Yung, if your child is previously yung Form 137, tapos digital copy ng ID, photocopy, pasensya na malit yung nakuha ko. At, at saka, 
yung mga forms ng lab. Next, so ang fee sa Homeschool Global ay 35,000 for a family of one child. Ang next child after kay first child ay 5,000 pesos for every succeeding child. So kung dalawang anak mo, ang tuition fee ay 40,000 pesos. Hindi pa to kasama sa books. Ang books nag nag-range from 10 to 30,000 pesos per child. Hmm? Okay. So sa mga gusto mo ng Okay. So sa mga gusto kumuha ng pep test sa mga indie homeschoolers natin. Ang dadalhin niyo and ang latest update sa pep test hindi na pwede hindi na sila tumatanggap ng walk in you have to set an appointment. Ang requirements na kailangan dalhin ay TSA or local civil register birth certificate, one original and one photocopy, two copies of one by one ID pictures, if applicable original and two photocopies of form 137 or form 138 registration fee. Ang willing check natin for registration fee dahil wala nang yung may walk-in special sila kasi dati, 200 pesos. Although ngayon, uh, wala, hindi na sila tumatanggap ng walk-in. You have to send an appointment. Kasi nakalagay dito, pag regular administration, which happens every no November according to their website, to the, the DepEd's website, is 50 pesos. So, tips para sa mga indie homeschoolers about DepEd. Yung, ano nila, yung regular administration nila, this was the last time we checked. With, uh, with an indie homeschooler who's now affiliated with SOT, sabi niya, uh, ang regional DepEd, nag -admin, yung regional DepEd ay nag administer ng PEP test ng June sa November. Ang results lumalabas three months after ng test. Tapos, ang ginagawa nila usually, hindi na nila hinihintay yung DepEd na tumawag sa kanila. So, she usually calls the DepEd. Tapos, ang huli kong narinig, may nakita ko sa homeschoolers of the Philippines, na ang um, pagka nabagsak mo yung isang mong subject sa isang grade level, you're gonna have to wait for six months to retake the pep test for that certain subject. Now, our next homeschool provider is the Pinyel Integrated Christian Academy, Kain Tarizal, uh, admission requirements for new students, new students, yung original report card and LRN, clear copy of birth certificate, certificate of good, good moral character or clearance from the previous school, Two by two ID pictures, two pieces, form 137 if available, parents or tutor's profile, clear copy of any accreditation, diploma, or transcript of records, saka duly accomplished application forms. Other requirements uh, sa mga indie homeschoolers, lahat ng nabanggit ko, plus pep, uh, yung results ng PEP test. Sa mga, meron din silang program for SPED, na din ang nabanggit ko kanina, at plus evaluation or assessment of the development pediatrician as basis for the program. Next, I'm having some school provider I'd like to discuss with you is the school of tomorrow. So, ang requirements nila ay birth certificate, report card ko meron, one by two copies ng one by one ID pictures at saka um, kailangan nilang magtake ng diagnostic test. Pagkatapos, you have to take note, meron silang orientation. You, ano, kung sino yung magtuturo sa anak nyo, in your case, it's probably you, the parents, or if you're planning to hire a tutor, uh, kailangan nilang maipasa yung test, yung final exam, or as we call it sa SOT, yung PACE test, at the end of the orientation. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take the orientation again, hindi i-release yung materials, yung modules, or yung PACEs, until maipasa mo yung or is orientation. So, ito ang fees sa School of Tomorrow. A uh, one-time registration fee per child is 2,500 pesos. One-time family registration fee is 15,000 pesos. Enrollment fee per child for ano, mga grade schoolers, kinders to grade schoolers, is 3,000 pesos a year. Diagnostic test per child, which is just, you know, one time, 1,000 pesos. Tapos yung mga modules nila or phases. Pag local print, it's 45 pesos and 50 centavos per copy. And for US print, it's 126 pesos per copy. Meron din tinatawag na score keys, which is parang key to correction. It's 93 to 126 pesos. Yeah. 
So, ito na yung pinakamalaking tanong about being social, yung sa socialization, socially awkward. Uh, shelter natin yung mga anak natin dahil tayo yung nag-homeschool. Yan. So, ang sagot ay, sabi ni Tina Rodriguez, in fact, homeschoolers benefit from two levels of socialization. Vertical, kasi they're socializing with people who are older and younger than them. And horizontal, socializing with peers or people around the same age. This is because most, if not all, homeschooled kids don't just stay at home to learn. They learn everywhere as earlier stated. Many join classes with other homeschoolers and even non-homeschoolers and are able to relate well with adults in the real world. Speaking yung sa ano, yung join classes with other homeschoolers, yung sa amin sa School of Tomorrow, sa Inagest din sa amin, in which other uh, homeschooling parents have been doing it, kung yung sa mga co-op, yung tulad na sa mga pens, I was telling you about. The parents take turns sa pagturo na music, RTE, health, throughout throughout the week, tapos magkakasama yung anak nila. So that's one thing you can do. If you have, um, not necessarily na pre-press kayo ng homeschool provider, as long as you're homeschoolers, you can build a co-op in your area. And that's one way you can, you know, get your kids to socialize. At saka, di ba, sa church naman natin, we have every chance na sa primary, all the way up until Relief Society or Elder Scorum for our children to socialize. Ayan. So, I made some examples, di ba, sinabi, as mentioned earlier, meron akong sinabi na yung mga, yung, na, yung drawbacks of homeschooling is yung mga wala silang JS prom, hindi sila makakatin ng mga JS prom, or wigin ko ng wika ng mga activities, things like that. So, I, I made here some lists ng mga church activities na Bakit pwede, natin, pwede makapag-socialize yung mga anak natin? And also, at the same time, it compensates to yung, yung sa traditional homeschool. Na mga activities sa traditional homeschool that can be compensated by church activities. At least dito masigurado ka na yung mga ka-socialize din ng mga anak natin ay yung standard, kaparehas ng standard ng gusto ng church dahil mga members tayo natin ng church. For example, sa, sa amin, like what I mentioned, yeah, sponsor that. Sa School of Tomorrow, wala kaming modules for MAPE and Values Education o yung edukasyon sa pagpapakatao. So I've mentioned in other ways you can facilitate MAPE. So sa Values Education, we were told by the School of Tomorrow na kahit anong religion mo or kahit anong uh, sect uh, where you belong, yung Sunday school ng church mo is your child's values education. So, in our case, yung values education, education, education sa pagpapakatao, Christian living, however you want to call it, it can be compensated by Sunday school. Uh, young men and young women primary class, seminary, at saka ngayon, di ba, yung sa ministering. Uh, the other, uh, last, sorry, yeah. two weeks ago, merong namatay sa ward namin, a distant relative of ours. So, in a way, it was a great opportunity for the kids na, Sinama namin sila mag-minister dun sa wake. And that it's a, it was a great teaching opportunity to teach them about the plan of salvation. Yeah. So next ay yung mga retreats. Diba usually sa mga, may, mga schools, may retreats. Then, pero naman tayong youth camps. Taong-taon yan. Libre pa. Yung JS prom. Meron tayong church dance. Hanggang ano yan? Hanggang YSA. Tapos yung sa MAPE. Pwede yung sa church choir, or usually sa primary, di ba, binibigyan sila ng materials for drawing, making cards, ganyan. Tapos, meron din sports fest. Tapos, yung mga field demo sa ka-foundation day, kasama sa youth camp, yung mga road show. Yan. So, ito na yung mga, ano, nandito na tayo sa medyo latter part ng ating discussion. Yung mga nagtanong. I took note of all your questions. So, I hope I was able to answer all of your questions, but these are more of the specific questions na hindi kayang sagutin ng mga discuss ko kanina. Ang tanong ni Sister RJ Manalo Tangaling, I hope you're, hi, shout out sa kanya. For how long does it happen and how much? As mentioned earlier, um, for how long does it happen? Yun na. You can homeschool your child however long or short. Lalo na yung mga toddlers na parang they are encouraged na ang learning nila is to play. Play school. So pag ayaw na nila, 
stop. You, you can stop. Or in in the, in the church also teaches us Nandi Bao to grab every teaching opportunities. So along the way, uh, pwede ano eh, hindi naman natin kailangan nakaupo talaga classroom setting. Like the last week, we had a fa- ano, yung uh, my husband's company had we had a family day sa Tagaytay sa Sky Ranch. Uh, I don't know kung alam niyo yung laro na yung sinusukit yung mga bibi tapos may number sa ilalim tapos yung based dun sa number of points na nakuha mo dun sa bibi then that's ano yun yung magiging gauge kung gaano kaliit o kalaki yung uh, yung toy na makukuha mo. So ang ginawa ang tinuro you know like it was a great teaching opportunity for math. So, kumuha sila ng apat na bibi, tapos sa ilalim nun, may numbers na pinapakita si ate. So, sila yung pinag-solve ko dun sa math. So, ga, ano, grab, ano, grab those opportunities when you can na maturuan yung bata in such a way na, ano, not threatening, I guess. That's, that's your word. Oh, at sabi ng husband ko, at makonect daw nila yung lesson sa real life. Lakas na hugot niya, no? So, yes, papasok na siya. Hi, hindi daw. Ano daw? Ang advantage ng homeschool, naka-unraw. Yung, sa galing, haba na na mo eh. Yung tinuturo mo raw sa real life, mas yung tinuturo mo sa school, mas madali mong i-apply sa real life kasi lagi mo siyang kasama. Like, um, we'll get to those later in some field trips. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. Okay, where do we begin? Haha, ha, I am in Antica currently. Currently, If I decide to homeschool my kid, who is an incoming grade one, is it necessary to find a school which offers a homeschooling program here? Or could we just purchase a curriculum from anywhere in the Philippines? Hello, Sister Lisa Solivio Berion. So, um, question, you have two options. To answer your question, you have two options. Option A is to go indie or independent homeschooler. At least, hindi mo na kailangang umalis ng antike. Uh, i, ano, pwede mong, you can deliver the lesson, the whole curriculum for grade one, however you want it. Well, uh, suggestion sa mga independent homeschoolers pala that I got from my friend who went indie before, um, before, uh, ano, before sila nag- uh, nagpa-affiliate sa School of Tomorrow, yung parent mismo, yung mommy, siya yung kumukuha, pumipili ng libro ng subjects for the entire year. Tapos yun yung i-administer yeah, niya, yun yung, pinapa, dun yung pinagtuturo niya at pinatasagot niya sa anak niya. So, so that's something you can do. Just to give you an idea. So, or you know, or you, pwede rin child-led na ano ba yung interest ng anak mo, then that's how that will serve as a guide or a gauge kung paano mo Kung ano yung mga libro na pipiliin mo para sa anak mo. If you, should you decide to go indie? Now, option B is find a homeschooler. Uh, find a homeschool provider. Merong iba na yung orientation nila because of, given the distance, then most of, given the distance, nagpapapayag sila na through Skype or video chat. Meron naman na option na talagang kailangan mo silang sadyain. Pupunta ka talaga sa Manila or recently with the School of Tomorrow, they had one in Cebu. Yan. So, ngayon tapos na sa Cebu, kailangan nyo nang pumunta sa, ano, sa Paranaque for the orientation. Yan. So, yan yung mga pwede mong gawin. So, yung purchasing ng materials is what you call the box curriculum. So, meron, although meron ding mga schools like Pinel Integrated Christian Academy, at meron silang tinatawag na open curriculum. I think yung sa parents orientation, pwedeng video chat lang. Pagkatapos, yung yung books, pwedeng, may mga suggested books sila for you. That's why it's called an open curriculum kasi pwede kang bumili ng books na sa tingin mo ay match para sa anak mo. Yeah. So I hope I answered your question. And her other question is, was, what's the idea of price range? So, for Philippine-based homeschool providers, 
It can range anywhere from 3,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos. And we're just talking about the tuition alone. Hindi pa kasama yung ibang expenses. Like, yung nga, yung mga supplement or, and, you know, mga office supplies. Yeah. Uh, and next question niya, how many hours do you usually spend in a day? Spend in a day na homeschool na yung talaga nakaupo lang sila working on their modules. It's give or take five hours. But then again, sabi ko nga, you can go. Means, ano, it's a, our homeschool provider, it's a work at your own pace. So, minsan, they go, mas, ano, na, natatapos sila sooner or later. So, pwedeng magtagal pa beyond five hours or so. But then again, it depends, it's, it, the, ano, depende yan sa, sa level ng bata. Like, so of course, kung higher levels, like maybe high school, you probably have to spend more hours. Pero sa amin, kasi we have a grade three and a grade one. Five, in average, it's five hours a day. Yeah. Ang tanong ni Sister Josan Maliktik Flaminiano, mas ano ba mas maganda at mas maging convenient sa dalawa, homeschooling or regular na pumapasok sa school? For uh, ako masasabi ko and I guess most more seasoned homeschool parents than me can honestly say na it's it's really hard to gauge kung alin talaga yung mas maganda kesa sa isa. Kasi merong iba naman na I'm not against traditional schooling for others and I'm not, you know, everyone's throat. So hindi ko naman sila pinipilit na, ay, alam nyo, mas maganda yung homeschool kesa sa traditional school kasi ganyan. I, be I still believe in, in the edu our government's, I guess, educational system, but it just didn't work for us. At ngayon kasi ang lifestyle, and, and homeschooling is a lifestyle. Sa amin kasi mas nag-work kasi uh, nag-aaral din ako ngayon in graduate school na through distance learning. So sa bahay lang din ako so I'm kind of homeschooling myself too. Uh, although it's called champion distance education, nag-aaral nag ako ng distance ng grad school through distance education. So mas sa amin, yung lifestyle namin, mas gusto namin na ka-homeschool kami kasi Mas may flexibility ako na magawa ko yung household chores. Nandito sila sa bahay. And we like we love to travel. So, pag may mga piece of seat sale, at least hindi na namin iisipin na, ay, may pasok mga bata ng gato araw. Hey, may piece of seat sale. One week tayong walang pasok. Ayan. So, kaya, it's one, I guess it's one of the reasons na, ano, where, ano, we love to travel. We love to explore the world. Ano man, dito man sa loob ng mansa o sa labas. So, Yun, first, yun yung para sa amin mag-work. So you also have to consider, bakit mo ba gusto mag-homeschool? Or um, you have to weigh things. Homeschool, traditional school, bakit? Which one will be, will work for your family better over the other? Yeah. So, I made the, ano, meron akong dito na kuhan checklist. Na, uh, things, questions you want to consider. You want questions you and your husband would, you like, would like to talk about if homeschooling is for you. Number one. Do you have the amount of time it would take to commit to providing an education to your children at home? It's, it's a, it takes a lot of time. It's not a band-aid solution to a traditional school just because hindi nag-work sa traditional school, ay, homeschooling na lang tayo. It doesn't work that way. Kasi, so I suggest, kasi talaga, it takes a lot of hard work. So I suggest na if you know a member in your ward, like what I said, kaya, an, iba, Home, on homeschool provider, um, if you're planning to go indie or to have a homeschool provider, na iba, na iba sa ward, na iba sa award members niyo, but still, they're homeschooling. I suggest na puntahan niyo sila, tignan niyo, you know, you kind of get the feel of it, tignan niyo for one, you know, for one session, what they do, and see if it's something for you. Maganda, maganda rin yung ganun na actual mo nakikita na, how do you, do you see yourself na kaya mo yung time na Habang nag choice ka on the side, nagtuturo ka ng mga bata. Ayan. Number two, are you willing to make personal sacrifices? Okay, babe. Mainit ba ito? Ayan. Mm. Mayroon, babe. Ayan. Ayan. Okay, so my husband works for Coke, um, so please support Coke. 
Yes, yeah, so a minute mate kasama sa Coca-Cola company. Not sponsored but we're a Coca-Cola family. But drink moderately. <laughs> okay, so next, are you willing to make personal sacrifices to make it possible to homeschool your kids? Kasi baka kasi lalo na sa mga working parents pareho. You have to decide uh, how do we make a time for our kids to be homeschooled kung parate nagtatrabaho. Should one of us quit? Kaya ba natin ng one source of income lang? How are we going to adjust our family kung sakaling mag-quit yung isa? Uh, number one, paano natin ipapasok yung time? Number two, paano kaya ba natin na isa lang yung source of income to think na mag-homeschool tayo? Things like that. It's something you and her husband should um, talk about. Number three, do you have enough money saved up for the supplies and materials that will be required for the school year? Do you have money put aside that can be used to pay for field trips and other educational needs that may pop up throughout the school year? Number four, do you have activities planned where you and your children can engage in socialization throughout their educational career at home? In which I think for us LDS members, it's not a problem because every Sunday we go to church, they have primary and Sunday school and all that. Number five, is your home organized in a way that there is plenty of room for school and limited room for distractions? You know, and you also have to set aside, you know, maybe a room or just a side of your house na doon sila mag-aaral. Number six, do parents, the both, eto, usually the case, this is usually the case. Do both parents agree to the homeschooling idea? Number seven, does your child seem excited or resistant to the homeschooling choice? So, uh, ito yung sa mga mas malalaki siguro na, you know, when marami na silang friends sa school, you pull them out and they have to explain to them na, you know, homeschool ka na namin. Now, how do you deal with that? Well, in our case, we never had to deal with it. So, it's something that you and your husband can talk about. Kasi sa amin, when, sa panganay namin, when we brought up the homeschool idea to him, he, he was excited. He liked it. He liked the idea kasi nga, he had a bad experience in school. Yes. Okay. So, next, number eight, do you have more than one child you will be teaching at a time? How will you handle teaching na yung sa, ano, sa mga anak? Uh, in our case, yung sa, sa curriculum namin, meron silang babasahin doon, tapos it's basically teaching them what they need to do, tapos may mga sasagotin sila questions. Kaya na-handle na ko na magtulong ng grade 3 sa grade 1 kasi their module is basically teaching them. So it's parang, so tinuturoan tinutu sila maging independent. Tapos pag may tanong sila na hindi clear, that's the only time na tatanungin nila ako. So that's one way of handling yung ano multiple levels ng mga anak na iba't ibang grades, di ba? Next, uh, will you need help in teaching your children the lesson that will be part of a curriculum? Na, yun na, siguro more on sa mga applicable to sa mga higher levels, kailangan makakahanap ba kayo ng resources for yun na, say as I mentioned earlier, for a math teacher, yan. Tapos, ano ba ang goal mo? What is your main goal for educating your child at home? Yan. Tapos, may isa pang question dito eh. Hmm. Yan. Sabi ni Sister Natalie Cardenas Bagalota, ang question ko ay more on sa day-to-day -day schedule or activity ng mga bata. How long ang mga sessions? How do I manage the time? Especially kung multi-level ang tinuturuan. What are some organized tools na available at pwedeng gawin to keep my sanity? I feel free. <laughs> yeah. So like when I mentioned how long mga sessions, it depends on, you know, the how fast or slow your child could go. But for us, in average, it takes five hours to finish everything. That's for grades three and one. Yeah. Tapos, how do I manage the time? Ako ang ginagawa ko. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I don't have, I'm not a work-at-home mom, although I'm in grad school. Uh, ngayon, wala akong school. Bakasyon ako. But the kids are back in school. <laughs> natapos kasi kami early February. We started in June last year. Natapos kami ng February. So we started just this May. Uh, so usually, ang routine namin sa umaga, we wake up, breakfast, ligo, ganyan. Then, in between, habang yun na, dahil nga yung modules nila, it's a work at your own pace, may babasahin sila doon. If they need clarification, they'll ask for my help. Pagtapos nila, then I'll check their work. So in between noon, then that's when I do the chores. 
Tapos, yeah, throughout the, tapos sa hapon, usually tapos na sila, they, they go and play, then I prepare dinner, tapos, uh, syempre, we call, ano, pag natulog na sila, then that's when I study, you know, that's when I study sa grad school. So, you know, I study through distance education. So, organizational tools, keep your sanity. Merong, meron sa mga, meron akong itong nga, itong handout na to, may binigay akong link sa YouTube, merong mga tutorials about DIY, homeschool planner, tapos meron din kayong, meron din ako nilagay na sample dito. Yan. Meron nilagay din ako na sample dito na yung mga free printables na organizational tools you can use for um, for planning out your homeschooling. But as for us, ako ito ang ginagawa ko. Hindi masyado kita dito eh. Yan. Meron kaming sariling folder, nilagay ko, may screenshot na kalagay, SOT, School of Tomorrow. Sa loob ng folder na yan, anyway, so hindi masyado kita dito eh, but you'll have this handout, ipopost ko online. Uh, so ngayon, yung, yung subfolders niya, for values ed, nagpapanood kami ng mga 90s, so yan, shout out sa mga batang 90s na bakahalataan ang age natin. But, uh, napag-usapan namin ng husband ko, it's a great, yung mga cartoons ng 90s that are great, that's a great way to, dahil mga anak ko, like, you know, interest-led. So, hindi ibig sabihin na yun, you have a box curriculum, you can't have an interest-led homeschooling journey. So, anyway, I'm talking too much again. Um, yung mga 90s na show na we can teach them about, you know, values education, o yung ESE, education for pagkakataon. So, meron akong folder dito. So, ayan, nakalagay, Sedi ang munting prinsipe. So, lahat ng cartoons nila for ESP, inorganize ko dyan. Tapos, next, yung isang folder, yung sa, pang, sa bunso namin si Charlotte. Lahat ng report, uh, lahat ng mga grades niya, schedule niya for daily, today nandito. Tapos, sa music namin, dinadagdag na, sa, sa music namin, sino ba dito, honestly, na lumaki sa church, lumaki sa primary, na alam lahat ng children's songbook. Ako, guilty ako dyan. Hindi ko lahat alam ng songs sa songbook. So, we decided na for our music class, as op as part of our opening exercise, na one song a day, ano kami, mag-aaral kami ng song sa children's songbook. Tapos, syempre, nandyan din yung Come Follow Me. It came in, it really came in handy. This is such a great way na to start our lesson. So, you, so we start our lesson with um, music from children's songbook. Tapos magpapay kami. Then we'll proceed to Come Follow Me, yung mga readings. Tapos yung last nandito, yung sa panganay namin kay Kendrick, ganun din yung mga daily schedule niya at saka yung mga grades niya. We're keeping track dito. Ayan. So ito yung laman ng folder nung sa Sedi. Tapos ito yung laman ng folder nung kay Charlotte. Nakalagay daily schedule saka master record sheets. Master record sheets yung way para makip check namin yung mga grades nila sa modules nila. At yan yung sasubmit namin sa School of Tomorrow. At the end of the school year, or should we finish earlier, pwede na namin isubmit to. Tapos ito yung sa Children's Songbook, yung mga MP3 files. Tapos ito yung sa Come Follow Me, yung mga videos. Siyempre, alam niyo na mga bata. Tapos yung, ano, meron ako Excel spreadsheet na in-spread out ko equally yung mga scriptures for the week dun sa Come Follow Me. Yeah. So here's this, ano, ito yung isang example ng schedule ni Charlotte. Uh, hindi masyado kita dito eh. Pero yun nga, yung sinabi ko, yung, yung first part na to na white na nakikita nyo, nakalagay dyan music sa Calvary's Education. Yun yung simula, yung sa Come Follow Me, saka yung sa Children's Songbook. Tapos dito nakikita nyo medyo color, ayan, ayan, color-coded. Kasi yung modules nila, color-coded by subjects, so yan, yan. Tapos pag nakagay ng gold na yan, it's actually dark gold gray, uh, dark gold too, yung shade na yan, ibig sabihin natapos na nila. And that's how I keep track of kung natapos na nila yung, ano nila, yung, uh, yung gold nila for today. Tapos yung nandito sa gold na to, nandito yung sa first part, yung music, kung ano yung song na kakatayin namin sa children's song book. Tapos yung scriptures na babasahin namin for the day from Come Follow Me. Tapos nandito sa mga gold usually white yan, pagka hindi pa nila natatapos, ano yan, um, yung pages, kailangan nilang tapusin for the day for these subjects. Yan. For one example, dito sa Saturday, may nakikita nyo may color pa rin. 
kasi nung itong Saturday na to, nagkaroon ng primary sports fest. So, ikinount ko yan as, yun yung PE niya for that day. So, yun yung ano. Tapos kay Charlotte, he, she has eight, uh, seven subjects. Meron siya seven subjects. So, siya, mas konti yung ginagawa niyang pages for grade one. So, mas, ano, mas marami yung subjects na ginagawa niya. She's in grade one. Ngayon yung panay namin, si Kendrick, she, he is in grade eight. Ito naman, nakik kung makikita niyo yung color coding na to, medyo konti. Kasi ano naman siya, uh, like what I said, the program can be individualized based to the need, based to the needs ng bata. Now, here's what we did. Eight subjects. Kendrick has eight subjects sa grade 3. Mas marami yung ginagawa niya dahil grade 3 na siya. So, yung eight subjects, salit-salit namin ginagawa. In this case, on Wednesday, ito Wednesday na ito nakaschedule siya, ang ginawa niya ay science, English, word building, at saka... Uh, Araling panlipunan. Pero kasi mas mahaba. So, apat lang yung subjects niya. Tapos, the following day, sa kanya ginawa yung Social Studies Filipino, Literature and Creative Writing and Math. Ayan. So, salit-salit sa, so, yun. Yan ang yung ginagawa namin. But then, here's an, this is just an example. And like we mentioned earlier, ano, uh, iniiba-iba namin to, nirarambol-rambol na namin para hindi sila maboard na next ganitong subject na naman for a whole year. Imagine how boring can that be because I, will, I got bored. Ayan. Tapos sa huli, yung SEBI. Ayan. Hindi masyado kita sa ilalim. Pero sa huli, yung SEBI na ginagawa namin. Tapos pag Friday, usually, ang ginagawa namin pag Friday ay art day. Uh, usually na, ang ginagawa namin, or ano, one subject lang yung gagawin nila, yung sa faces nila, or sa modules. Pagkatapos mag-art na kami. Or the other way around. Uh, yun na, nag-origami kami, pero today, yun na, nagtanong sila about sa Chinese pop shadow puppetry. So, naghanap kami ng documentary sa YouTube about, about it. Yeah. So, uh, here, ano, I'd like to share with you yung mga field trips namin. Malak na matapos. Ayan. So, ito yung mga ano namin. Ang hashtag namin ay The Cruising De La Cruises. <laughs> ito yung mga naging field trips and other at school activities we did throughout the entire school year for 2018 to 2019. So, if-flash ko na lang dito sa inyo, but then, uh, like what I said, you, ano, you get a free handout. Ayan. Kung makikita nyo, ayan. Ayan. Ayan yung kalagay, Bagak Bataan Death March. Kilometer 8. See? Dinaanan lang namin to sa sasakyan. It's very cheap. Wala kaming ginastos. Ayan. So, in every kilometer sa Bagak Bataan, meron ganyan. Yung sa Death March. Ayan. Next. Ito. Ayan. Nanood kami sa CCP ng... Nanood kami sa CCP... Ah! Ayan. Mirror image kasi nahirapan ako. Nanood kami sa CCP ng Snow White Ballet. So, we use this... Uh, this, this happened on a weekend and we use this as a map lesson. So, first time nila makapanood ng ballet sa Cultural Center of the Philippines. At ang binayad namin dito ay 500 pesos per head sa balcony. Yung pinaka, I think that's, bas, yung pinaka malayo ba? I think that was called the bal balcony. <coughs> so next. Oh, socialization baka mo. Oh, eto, oh. Yung field trip ng ward namin sa National Museum. Uh, diba? So free, we had free food from the, from the church budget. We had free transportation and free admission. Yan. Oh, sa ano, sa mga bulakin yung sa mga kababayan kong bulakin nyo, nakikita nyo na to siguro, may link akong nilagay dito, yung Kotako family sa Bagong Bayan, Bukaway, Bulacan, every year nakikita, ano to eh, feature sila lagi sa TV. Every year, binubuksan nila yung bahay nila at napaksang katutak na ilaw. So, papapasok lang sila, you can walk in anytime and it's free. Ayan, kasama ko ang aking Mother Earth together with the kids. This is absolutely free. Papasok ka lang doon. So, it was one of the field trips. Tapos, yan. Ito. Yan. Libre lang din to. Dadaanan mo lang to. Yung kilometer zero ng, bata ng death march sa Bagak, Bataan. All you need is a car. Tapos, pumunta rin kami sa, yan. 
Bataan Nuclear Power Plant. Ang binayad namin dito ay 200 pesos per car. So, so kung mas marami kayo sa sasakyan, no problem. Pero uh, nakalagay dito yung dito sa bibigay kong handout. You need to make and set an appointment first. And usually sa mornings lang yung tour nila sa loob mismo ng planta kasi walang air dahil nga hindi kumaga, hindi naman talaga fully functioning yung planta. Hindi, walang aircon sa loob. So, ayan. So, meron dito yung contact person. Maybe we should share ko sa inyo, no? To share his care. Kung sino yung pwede niyang contact yan for, hmm, for appointment. Pero mas maganda sa umaga. Ano, sa umaga. Kasi kung sa hapon, hindi na kayo papapasok yung mismo doon sa planta. Merong engineer doon na magdidiscuss sa inyo about the nuclear, about nuclear power plant. Next, ayan, sa bataan ulit. Yung, ano, yung refugee center, no? Yung Philippine Refugee Center. Ayan, no? Bold People Museum. Philippine Refugee Center sa Morong Bataan. Uh, nilagyan ko ng watermark, but as you can see yan, yun yung isa sa dalawang original na unang uh, boat na dumating dito sa Pilipinas galing Vietnam. Yung isa na ganito, ito pa yung original, ha? hindi to replica. Yung isang original ID nila na nila sa California, sa isang museum sa California. Pero yung isa hanggang ngayon nandito pa rin. Yan. So ang cost dyan ay 30 pesos per person. Kids below 7 or 5 years old, hindi na namin maalala, but somewhere around that for our free. Tapos, in order for you to get around, kasi hanggang ngayon, nandun pa rin yung mga temples nila na sinasambahan, yung mga kambo, ano, iba-iba sila, yung mga Buddhist, Vietnamese, yung, I mean, yung iba kasi, iba't iba religion, like, you know, Buddhists, and Leo, so yung mga, iba-iba sila doon ng, mga, gumawa sila ng mga temples nila, hanggang ngayon nandun pa rin. So, but you need a car to get around. Hindi talaga kakayan. Hindi pwedeng lakaran. It's too far. And most especially if you have young children, hindi pwede talaga. Tapos ito, birthday ng anak ko. Pag birthday ng mga anak namin, we go on field trips. So, we went to Clarkland Dinosaurs Island in Clark, Pampanga. The original price is 350 pesos. But if you go to Metro Deal, this is not, this is not a sponsored ad. If you go to Metro Deal, it's 199 pesos. So, you save 43%. Tapos, yung, so, uh, you, you might have to, you might want to double check with them because when it's the birthday celebrant, they get in for free. Just show any proof of, you know, birthday. Yeah. <clears throat> Tapos, sa bataan din, as you notice, dahil taga north kami, marami kami food trips sa north. Ayan. Hindi masyado kita yung picture. So you can see, ayan, ang bana ng kagitingan sa Mount Sabat. Ang, buy, ang binayad lang namin dyan, 50 pesos per car. So, pero, ang binayad namin ay, ang parking pala, ang parking ay 50 pesos plus 100 pesos para sa aking apa. At, ang kasama dun sa, ano na yun, 100 pesos na yun, um, pwede kang umakit sa dambana ng kagitingan. Meron ding war museum doon. Makikita mo rin yun yung mga list ng names ng mga veterans. At saka doon sa dambana ng kagitingan nung may ano pala, may elevator doon mismo doon sa cross. Kaya lang that time ginagawa. So hopefully sa mga makakapunta doon next time update us kung gumagana na yung elevator. But be careful. Sobrang tarik papunta doon. It's very sharp. Tapos ito pa isa pang free. Every ano, tuwing tuwing December starting mga panahon ng hmm, panahon ng ba to? Simbang gabi. Ayan, yung Giant Lantern Festival. Libre lang to sa Robinson Star Mill, San Fernando, Pampanga. Ayan, so nung pag, ano, naging family tradition na namin na ting Pasko, Christmas Day itself, sa gabi, dyan kami pupunta. So it's free. Pabayaran na lang to, okay. Tapos, ito, next, Mind Museum. Libre yung kaming nakapunta kasi company, <laughs> Christmas party. But, uh, Kung pupunta kayo doon, as walk-ins, as walk ang adults is 625 pesos. Kung ang ara anak nyo ay nag-aaral sa isang private school, hanggang college, it's 475. Pagka-Philippine public school, 190 pesos. At sa mga teachers ay 190 pesos din. Tapos, ito pa. Bumalik kami sa Cultural Center of the Philippines for another music class. No Limit Angela de Opera. Ayan, sa Cultural Center of the Philippines. Ang kasama namin... Dalawang, yun yung dalawang producers na nagdala ng Noli Metanghera de Opera from New York. Dahil kaming tatlo ay estudyante, tatlo kami estudyante, out of four, 
50% nung ano to ha, unang nirelease to, nung una tong pinalabas dito sa Pilipinas, the very first time they had their run at CCP, 50% agad yung discount namin. So, nandun kami medyo malapit sa may stage. Limutan ko na ba, we saved, yeah. So, we saved 50, half of the admission. Tapos ito, birthday naman ng bunso namin sa Kizuna. Ayan, it's 400 pesos for... 400 pesos for three hours, and in every child you bring, well, ano, may, may one adult na libre naman. So since dalawa kami parents, dalawa yung anak namin, one is to one, so hey, that's perfect, diba? Yeah. Don't forget to bring your socks. At baliktad pala. Ito, isa pang free. Museo ni Jose Rizal sa Kalamba. Ayan. So, ang schedule nila ay Tuesday to Sunday, 8 to 4. Ayan. Tapos, ayan. Sa Bataan ulit, Pawikan Conservation Center. Morong Bataan. Ang entrance fee is 20 pesos per person. But I suggest pumunta kayo doon ng November kasi yun yung Pawikan, Pawikan Festival. Yung mga eggs na, ano na, na, na hatch na pakakawalan nila sa beach. Ayan. Yeah. Pagkatapos, ito, sa panlibre, trick or treat, so, so ayan, sa mga socialization, ayan, trick or treat sa work. Ayan. Yeah. Pagkatapos, sa mga taga-batangas dyan, magtatayo ng isang children, na, ano, Museum of Philippine Art. Ang tawa, ayan, yan yung magiging tawag, Tumba Tumba Children's Museum of Philippine Art. Nagkaroon sila ng sneak peek ng magiging itsura niyan sa UP Diliman, sa Vargas Museum, for a limited time. So, sa mga, ano dyan, sa mga, sa mga taga-UP community na nanonood ngayon, every Wednesday, kung ikaw ay UP employee, alumni, alumna, alumnos, or student, current student, pakita nyo lang yung ID nyo, lahat ng museum sa UP Diliman ay free. Ayan. Next ay, ito. Ito yung sinabi ko kanina, yung World War Museum. Kasama yan sa bayad dun sa, sa bataan. Yan. Tapos, meron isang bagong attraction ngayon sa Dinosaurs Island. Ayan, no? Wonders of the World in Clark, Pampanga. Ayan, may mga, ayan, as you can see, yung miniature ng Coliseum. Meron din miniature na Great Wall of China, Machu Picchu. Yung mga ancient wonders of the world, may mga miniature do. So, ayan sa mga music. No, music naging music class sa anak namin. Ayan. Sa state namin. Primary Christmas Corral no Christmas. Yan. Tapos, at the end of the school year, may mga activities din naman yung school nam, yung homeschool provider namin. So, ayan. Yan yung sneak peek nila. Pinakuha na namin sila nung tapos na sila sa mga modules nila. Homeschool is cool. Yan. So, yun. Tapos, yung anak namin, dahil sumusunod ng School of Tomorrow sa sa ano, Sa, sa order ng DepEd, yung sa kindergarten app, uh, four years old yung si Charlotte, noong June last year pumasok, pero nag-five siya by August, so pasok siya sa kinder, sa kinder na kwato. So isang ka lang siya sa kinder, at ito ang kanyang graduation. Ayan. So, as you can see, meron siyang diploma. Tapos, the following day, silang dalawa naman may award. Ayan, no? Ang tawag dyan ay awards and night banquet. Ayan. Pareho silang may medal, pareho silang may certificate. Uh, ang nakuha ni Kendrick na award, yung panganay namin, ay 4,000 club member. Meaning, 40 modules and up, or 40 paces and up, ay 40 paces pala. Nasa 40 paces, yung nakuha niyang 100%. Tapos siya ay Honor A. Ayan, may medal siya. Ang Honor A, ibig sabihin, ang average ng kanyang grades ay above 94%. Yung, yung kapatid naman niya, si Charlotte yung bunso, ay member ng 6,000 club. Meaning, 60 modules yung or paces ang naging grade niya ay 100%. At siya rin ay nasa Honor A. Ayan. Tapos, meron lang akong isashare sa inyo in conclusion na kasi maraming tao iniisip na yun na, yung sa socialization, na we are, na shelter natin yung mga anak natin. Ay. Ayan. Na shelter natin yung mga anak natin. Na, no, we should be exposing our kids to the ano, dark and dreary world. Sa makamundong mundo. 
Um, anyway, ayaw mo lumabas mo sa PowerPoint ko. But I'd like, I'd, and I won't take much of your time. May get some orders at you. Okay. Ito lumabas na. In conclusion, si, I don't know if she's still the primary president. General Primary President, in 2017, meron naging talk si Sister Jones, Joy Jones, about uh, yung sa sin resistant generation ng mga bata, ng mga anak natin. So, ito, minabasa ko yung sa PowerPoint sa aking laptop, so hindi ko nakikita yung mukha ko. <laughs> so, sabi niya, fortifying children to become sin resistant is a task and a blessing for parents, grandparents, family members, teachers, and leaders. We each bear responsibility to help. However, the Lord has specifically instructed parents to teach their children to understand the doctrine of repentance, faith in Christ, the Son of the living God, and of baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost, and to pray and to walk uprightly before the Lord. How to bring up our children in light and truth may be a challenging question since it is individualized for each family and each child. The Heavenly Father has given universal guidelines that will help us. The Spirit will inspire us in the most effective ways we can spiritually inoculate our children. Yeah. Tapos si President Nelson, as we all know, nasa Pacific Islands siya ngayon, nasa may Pacific Islands, nung pumunta siya sa Samoa, and then, this is very timely, last minute ko lang itong uh, dinagdag. Nakalagay, sabi ni President Nelson sa mga Samoan, there are difficult days ahead. Please protect your children. Help them to know the Lord and to love, and love Him and keep His commandments and be free from the shackles of ad addiction and bondage. So for me, nakatulong yung sa turo ng church na yung sa so follow me in line with homeschooling but then again uh, homeschooling is not for everyone the same way the traditional school it works for others for others it doesn't but like what I said wait things timbangin nyo why are you ano, going for homeschooling bakit traditional schooling ano naman eh you can always switch anytime whenever wherever so this is ano this is where my webinar ends uh, I will, like what I mentioned earlier, for those who have been in and out of the, of this webinar, um, feel free, I know, I will send the, uh, yung, 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 yung PowerPoint presentation ko. And if you if should, you, every, I know, I, I use so much effort na, para hindi ako ma-plagiarize, and I hope, hindi rin ako, hindi nyo rin ako plagiarize So, naglagay ako ng reference doon kung how, I, paano isa site yung reference na everything we've discussed here. Uh, so, if you have any further questions or very specific questions, you can always add me on Facebook. Nakalagay rin yung email address ko dun sa PowerPoint. And that's it. Well, kung wala nang mag-comment, I'd say goodbye and thank you for watching. Good night. Bye-bye!